Hi, this is Pam Smith with Farm Journal Magazine, and I'm here with Carl Bradley, University of Illinois plant pathologist, and we're looking at some seedling diseases in soybeans. Carl, can you tell me what uh, what we're looking at and the plots that you have going on here? Sure, yeah, we, we've inoculated uh, some of this area with rhizoctonia, which is a fungus that can cause uh, uh, seedling disease in, in uh, soybean plants, and uh, but uh, the growers can deal with a multitude of different pathogens, and that would include uh, Rhizoctonia, uh, Fusarium, Pythium, and Phytophthora. And uh, depending on the year, what we see different spectrums of pathogens. This year has been kind of a very different year, as, as most people would, would recognize. And uh, a lot of our soybeans are going in a lot later than they normally would. And so that may mean that the, the spectrum of pathogens that growers are going to be dealing with uh, that might cause seedling diseases might be different. In a typical year where growers are planting uh, a lot earlier than this, uh, uh, when those soil conditions are, are very cool and, and, and if they may be wet as, as well, pythium is generally one of the major problems because it likes cool and wet soils. And, uh, but in a year like this where uh, we're now planting into warmer soil temperatures, um, it's not as likely as we'll see much pythium uh, problems. Uh, Phytophthora, however, is a, is a pathogen that likes warmer soil temperatures. So uh, in a year like this where we're planting into soil temperatures that are above 60, 65 degrees, uh, if, if things uh, remain, uh, continue to be wet in the state, then we'll probably be dealing with uh, some Phytophthora issues um, uh, in soybean. Um, with Rhizoctonia, uh, it tends to be um, a pathogen that's not quite as affected as much as, as Pythium or Phytophthora as far as uh, soil conditions or temperatures. It's pretty active over a fairly wide range of, of, uh, of temperatures and, and moisture uh, conditions in the soil. And so it's one that growers may deal with year in and year out. And then finally Fusarium is one that's uh, um, uh, caused by uh, I guess a complex of different uh, species of Fusarium in the soil. and. Uh, it's one that's a little bit more difficult to get a handle on because uh, sometimes there may be uh, fusarium pathogens that we don't consider uh, primary pathogens but uh, more opportunistic pathogens and when a, when a, a seedling uh, may be stressed by something else or maybe infected by something else it, it may allow an opportunity for some of those more opportunistic uh, fusarium species to cause some infection. So that's one that we can deal with uh, in some years as well. Um, I do have uh, some inoculated plots here uh, that we, uh, when we planted these, we did inoculate with uh, the Rhizoctonia fungus. And uh, in general, uh, you can see big differences in uh, areas where we have uh, inoculated and have not as far as the, the number of plants that are out there. But uh, with Rhizoctonia, we typically see these reddish brown lesions right here. They're often kind of sunken like that one is. And uh, we can see those lesions up on the hypocotyl, and uh, we can also see uh, root damage uh, caused by Rhizoctonia as well. And, uh, and so the Rhizoctonia, out of all these pathogens, may be one of the most easy to diagnose in the field because it does produce these very um, uh, obvious lesions, whereas with, uh, with Fusarium, or Pythium, it may just be uh, more of a, a lack of root development, and so uh, you may not see lesions associated with it. So. All right, thank you.